back for episode three of Moment Talk. My name's Brian. And I'm Phil. <laughs> this week's episode is brought to you in annoying voices. Because <laughs> we don't have any good content. Isn't that right, Brian? That's right, Phil. <laughs> All right, the only question we got this week was... Uh, what is the cleanest side of a moped? And the answer is... The inside! You were all wrong! John Madison asks, How do I get more MPHs out of my Yamaha hopper? I already added flame decals and cut a bunch of holes in the bike to make it lighter. Any other pro tips? Well, John, do you live near a big cliff? Ah! <laughs> 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 but seriously, do you live near a big cliff? <laughs> Graham M. writes, What are some things I can do to keep my bing that I bought from Seb's used parts from leaking? Mm, uh, I don't know, guys. Uh, let me think about that one. Chittering. Mm, mm. I would suggest not putting gasoline in it. Then it won't leak. First phone interview with Moped Talk. We are calling up Mike B. You might know Mike B from multiple moped rallies. He's a member of Black Black. And uh, he gets around. <laughs> but really, he travels a lot. So what are you doing in Austin? I am working at the uh, moped shop here for a couple months, which is awesome. But I've been I've been learning so much down here at the shop. It's great, man. That's and awesome. Today I, learned, today I learned that you can put a solo starter clutch on a lower uh, M38 that bolts right up, and uh, and that you if you try to put a case on it on a Pook engine that's been case matched to a Polini, you're going to have a hell of a time making it feel up. And that's what I learned today. Those are some good pro tips. Why don't you tell us about tell us about your favorite scooter? Okay, uh, my favorite scooter personally is the 1985 uh, CH150 Honda Elite. And it's just got, it's the epitome of like ugly, awesome, 80s scooter. It's got a flip up headlight, all digital display, 150 cc, you know, it goes 65 to 70, and you, you just look so good doing it. The scooters are cool. I really like them. And, and, I, and I always respect the scooters because they're what got me into riding, you know. Um, I remember when I went to go buy my scooter, uh, I was going to go buy it. My first scooter was the Yamaha Raz, an 87. And my friend Kenton had one, and I kind of wanted one too, so I went to look at him, and the guy who was selling it was like, he had this scooter, and then he had a General 5 Star, and I remember looking at the General 5 Star and being like, that thing looks cool as shit, but I bet you can't get parts for it. So I got a scooter instead. And I kind of had like a really good time with my ex-girlfriend on it, so like, I like loved scooters for some reason. <laughs> Mike, tell us, tell us about your greatest crash story. Okay, um... So, this one time, I uh, got a pook and a pinto, and I was like, I'm going to reboot this thing. So, in three, three hours in the middle of the night, I rebuilt the whole thing. I put, like, a race crank in it, and I kitted it, all that, all the bells and whistles, you know. So, I'm cruising, and um, I had a really good day out on my new moped, and, like, the, the Brinkin period was just, like, I just said, I just threw it to the birds, and I just went for it, because, I don't know, I don't know about you, I can't go, like, the quarter throttle or half throttle. But I know that I got that other, that oomph there. So I was blasting her out. I blasted this really fat chick on this, on this scooter. And this was important to me because she had passed me like all the time on my res. And I was just like, I just had, I hated her, man. And so like, I finally blasted this chick and she pulled up next to me at the stop sign. I was like, she was like, Hey, uh, what, is that wrong? Evil? She asked me that. I thought that was kind of funny. 
<laughs> and I said no. Uh, I told her I kid it. And she told me it was like illegal. And she she went off. But I mean, I got back at the, at the heavier chick on the scooter. That was good. And then me and Ken were riding around and we hit these S curves. And I was like blasting through these S curves. And my bike turned all the way to the side and was like skidding. And then I caught like an edge and crashed everywhere. And I got up and pulled my bike out of the street and. Kenan was like right in front of me, so he was gone. And I ended up getting like stabbed through my back into my lung, and my lung collapsed. And I was in the hospital for like 15 days or 14 days, but it was really cool because I got to, you know, I got to the hospital, all my moped buddies from Kansas City were there. It was cool to see, you know, all your buddies that care about you. And the day I got out, I bought a 78. Peanuts was a salary. Hey, come on, man. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it, uh, tell me about uh, Austin Mopeds. It's owned by Lester, right? It's um, it's a nice little shop, and down here the market's like so high. It's ridiculous. It's like you know a stock maxi is like eight hundred dollars here. It's just crazy. Like people will buy a kid's bike for fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. So this, this whole time I've had to be like, yeah, I, I didn't want to be like, you know, like talking about like fifty dollar magnums and stuff in the Midwest, you know. But it's it's, it's fun though. They they know what they're doing and um, really built stuff right. You know, it's like uh, always like new seals, new bearings, everything. And it's cool because I'm getting to tackle some bikes that I've never really had time to mess with. Tell us about okay. your blog. Okay. Um, I just started my blog about a month ago, a little bit longer than that, and it's called Home Alone with Mopeds. I made it right before I left Chicago, and it was pretty much like, I was. I thought to myself, oh, I'm around mopeds every day, why don't I just document it, and maybe some people can learn some stuff, or at least just, I travel a lot, so maybe, like, it's a good way for my family and friends to, like, just see where I'm at, and stuff like that, so... I named it Home Alone with my mopeds because Home Alone is awesome and I was just sitting around a lot with mopeds but since it started I've only traveled which is kind of funny and so pretty much I have like I've got 10, 10 or 11 uh, things in there and I do a lot of stuff it's mostly just pictures of where I go but I did I covered like a July 6 uh, rear clutch on a Hobbit um, wheel and stuff like that uh, it's just a nice little blog for all my buddies to follow me, and I, I've, I've got like 2,000 views, and I've only been up for like a month. So I'm, I'm pretty pumped on that, and it's nice to see like that people in like Norway look at it, and I don't really know how they get to it, but I'm trying to be more more helpful with it, um, more resourceful, but most of the time it's just like, oh, I'll check this bike out, I think it looks cool, and this one's from France, and it's different, and stuff like that, so comment on it if you just it's called uh home alone with moped uh dot blogspot.com but if you just google home alone moped it's there man it's cool i'm excited about it well we enjoy reading your blog so keep updating and maybe we'll comment well you have good stories so we'll uh be sure to call you again sometime thanks for your okay, contributions well, all right i love you guys all, all right, right bye thanks mike please hang up and try again a lot of people have been asking, what kind of GPS should I get for my moped? What is a GPS? What is a moped? Well, we have some answers. Uh, GPS, Global Positioning System. I thought it was satellite. <laughs> global Positioning Satellite System. Why isn't it GPS? Because it's a GPS system. Yeah. Okay. All right, I so if it was a GPS system, then wouldn't it be GPSSS? It would, but it's like an ATM machine. 
An ATM machine. An yeah. automated teller machine machine. Yeah. Okay. All right. I got it. So GPSSS. Why do you want one on your moped? I want one so I can see my speed. That's right. A GPS will tell you your top speed and should be considered completely accurate as far as mopeds are concerned. Much more accurate than a cable-driven speedometer. Did you know the government... Uh, puts in an error into civilian GPS's so they can't be exactly precise. Have you been talking to Mad Dog 2020 <laughs> or what? <laughs> no, it's <laughs> true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, another good reason to have a GPS is that they have uh, bicycle routes and you can yeah. you can map yourself from wherever you are to wherever you want to be and it will route you on friendly streets. Now, a lot of people have these science phones that have GPS built in. Why do you not want to use a science phone on your GPS module on your moped? I'll tell you why. Because those phones are expensive, yo. That's true. That's true. How much can I expect to pay for a standalone GPS unit, Brian? Oh, about $15. $15? Where do I get one for that much? Look it up on eBay. Oh, yeah? Is there any particular brand mm -hmm. that... you? that the Lafayettes use? The Lafayettes fully endorsed the Mio GPS. That's M-I-O. What are some of the pros of a Mio GPS? Uh, let's see. It's cheap. Oh, it's easy to mount. Small, self-powered battery unit inside. It's got backlit features. You can power it through USB. That's pretty sweet. Are there any downsides to the Mio? Oh... A few. It's hard to update the maps because most of them on eBay are uh, used anyway, so they're going to be older maps. And they have... The battery life isn't the best, about an hour and a half from my experience. Also, it takes a while for the GPS satellites to connect with you. And sometimes, like, I found, like, if you ride where there's a bunch of trees and stuff, it can't find you. Yeah, but we ride in Indiana, so there's not a bunch of trees. Works fine for us. Yep. But, uh, yeah, Mio GPS, you can get them used for about 20, 25 bucks shipped on eBay. Get them with the, the car mount if you can. Those are really easy to hack up, and then they bolt onto your moped. Real nice, like. Well, this is the ending of our show that we are doing now, and uh, it is snowing outside currently, and I imagine this might be snowing where you live. I like to think that. So in closing of this show, we would encourage you to send your questions to mopedtalk at gmail.com and also please submit pictures of your moped in snow. We will uh, include it in next week's episode if we do one. Yeah, so please send us, uh, send us anything. Yeah, send us more questions. <laughs> We're or, bored. Or pictures. Pictures of your pets on mopeds. Stuff to talk about, like topics, you know. Send us links to cool um, threads. Yes, send us anything to help us... Naked pictures. ...want to keep doing this. Please send us your favorite naked picture of DZ. <laughs> <laughs> How can you pick those? They're all my favorite. <laughs> All right, this is Phil signing off for Moped Talk. Stay classy, mopeds. <laughs> this is Brian saying goodbye.